Hey everybody, Father Scott Vanderveer here with the first installment of the book, Rediscover Jesus. Maybe the first step of learning that we need to rediscover Jesus is to consider that perhaps up until now, we have had a misconception of who Jesus is and what his teaching is all about. If you were to watch the news from a distance and try to learn about Christianity by what is talked about in the news about Christian churches and, and controversies in the, in the Christian world, you would think it was all about reproductive stuff, about birth control and abortion. You would think it was all about hot button relationship topics, like about some of the LGBTQ stuff that is, is important in society right now. You would think that it was all about these very hot topic, current day political issues. And everything I just told you about, Jesus never spoke about. He never said a word about those things. He never said a word about any of that because he wasn't here to talk about things that are hot topics for people trying to figure out who's in and who's out or who's right and who's wrong. Jesus made room for everybody. And Jesus knew that everybody's journey of virtue was not about comparing them to someone else, but about recognizing that the foundation of it all is that every human being is a child of God, is made in God's image. So it's important that we rediscover Jesus because there's a good chance that everything we've learned about him from society is actually too based in time and in political realities that are part of right now and are not things that Jesus taught about. The Bible may have taught about them in the Old Testament or in the letters of the New Testament, but the four gospels, the four books that we turn to for the actual words, the actual teaching of Jesus, they were not about any of those issues. Those words never came out of his mouth. That doesn't mean that the church can't teach about those issues. That makes sense, doesn't it? That we can draw teaching from things Jesus said, from the principles he gave us, even if it doesn't involve a direct discussion of, of, of that topic. We can imagine WWJD, what would Jesus do, even if we don't have an actual quote from him about that particular topic. But it feels like we need to have a beginner's mind, as they say in the East. We have, to, we have to approach Jesus with the sense that, huh, I'd like to get to know you because I suspect there's things about you that I've assumed wrongly or that I was taught by people who didn't know you fully. I don't think any of us knows Jesus fully until we go beyond the veil, as they say and meet him face to face in heaven. Interestingly, I was walking through a neighborhood the other day. I was walking through a, uh, a neighborhood of our community and I saw a beautiful grapevine cross woven, twisted together that was on someone's porch. It, it got my attention because it had some, some greenery and some, uh, some flowers woven into it and it was really beautiful. And the fact that it was grapevine made me think a bit about the crown of thorns. Even though it didn't have thorns on it, it had that kind of earthen, viney look that reminded me of some of the suffering that Jesus did. Uh, and, and he did it for, for sinners and for outcasts. He told the thief that was on his one side, you will be with me this very day in paradise. But then I noticed, after noticing the grapevine cross that caught my eye, that in the foreground, there was a sign on the post of the porch as you come up the steps that said, warning, no stupid people allowed beyond this point. We need to rediscover Jesus. The same person who puts the cross up on their porch to show what matters most to them is probably the same person who decided 
that they were going to put a sign up telling people not to be stupid, whatever that means. We need to rediscover Jesus, the one who teaches us about inclusion and grace and mercy, about making room at the table for everyone. What if a stupid person wanted to approach that grapevine cross and experience the connection of the people who have such a beautiful faith in such a beautiful savior? What if somebody with an intellectual disability or who simply saw the world differently in a more limited way than, than you did. Would it be, would it be appropriate to say, oh, we don't, we don't welcome that person here. It would be expected to me that if you have that sign up, the cross is nowhere in sight. And if you have the cross up, that sign is nowhere in sight. That doesn't mean that those people can't learn and grow, but it caught me as a, as, a, as a good example of a reality that we know is true. That many of us who talk about Jesus the most may know him the least. Thank you for coming on this journey of rediscovering Jesus. May God bless you and all those you love now and always.